Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the first module of our deep learning course and this first module is about the basics of deep learning. In the previous videos of this module we have discussed what is meant by a neural network and how does a neural network work. And in this video let's try to understand what is meant by perceptron. So let's get started. These are all the topics that we will be discussing today. First let's try to understand about deep learning and how perceptron is important in deep learning. And in the next section, let's try to understand what is meant by this perceptron in detail and also what are all the different factors involved in it. Next, let's discuss about the mathematical representation of a perceptron. So what exact calculations happen within it? What are the formulas that are involved in it? So those details, let's discuss in that section. And later, let's try to understand what is meant by this activation functions and how does that work in a perceptron? So these are all the four topics that we will discuss today. And let's get started. So this is the definition of a deep learning. And we have discussed this several times in our course. So deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that uses artificial neural networks to learn from the data, right? So we have several models like logistic regression, support vector, etc. When we use those models to learn from the data, we call that as machine learning. But when we use these artificial neural networks, we call that as a deep learning. So it's as simple as that. And this is the diagrammatic representation of an artificial neural network. So we know that a neural network contains a input layer, a output layer, and there are like several hidden layers between them. And in one layer, so let's say that we have this input layer. In one layer, we have several neurons, right? So all these circles represent a neuron. And similarly, we can have like any number of neurons in this hidden layer one. So this neuron is what we call as a perceptron. Okay. In other words, perceptron is nothing but the most basic unit of a neural network. In this, the most basic unit is nothing but this circle or what we call as a neuron. In other terms, we call this as perceptron, right? And we have also discussed that the inspiration of neural network is our nervous system, right? The human nervous system. And you can also think about this neural network as the brain that we have. So our brain has several, you know, neurons interconnected. And you can think about that as a neural network and all these individual neurons we have in our brain, right? You can think about that as a perceptron, right? So if you think about a biological neuron, it has dendrites, you know, through which the information flows and you have the cell nucleus where some processing happens. And after that, this processed information passes through the axon tail and then we have the axon terminal through which it passes to the other neuron. So this is how the information and the processing kind of happens in the nervous system. So, so similarly, this basic unit of neuron is what we call as perceptron in an artificial neural network. So I hope everyone is clear now. Now let's try to understand in detail about this perceptron. So this is the definition of a perceptron. A perceptron is a basic artificial neuron that takes input, applies weight, combines them and produces an output using an activation function. It is used for tasks like binary classification and as a building block of neural networks. So this definition may seem complex, but I'll try to explain this to you in a simpler way. So as I said, you can think about perceptron as a basic unit of this artificial neural network, which we call as like, let's say a perceptron is an artificial neuron, a basic artificial neuron. And now let's discuss about uh, the factors like inputs, weights, and, and you know, other things. So these are all the factors that are involved with it. So we have inputs, we have weights, bias, a weighted sum, activation function and finally we would get an output okay so first let's try to understand about this input inputs are nothing but uh, the input features that we have discussed so we have this x1 x2 and x3 right so these are examples of my inputs so let's consider this as our input feature let's say that we are working on a binary classification problem where we have to say whether a person is diabetic or not so in that case you can take input features like the age of a person uh, you know what is their blood pressure is like whether they have any other diseases or not so these can be separate input features right so let's say x1 is the age x2 is their blood pressure and so on so this is what we call as inputs or input features and then we have weights in this case the weights are w1 w2 and w3 and it's important to understand that the number of weights that you have are equal to the number of input features that you have. So this weights are nothing but each of this input would have a weightage. 
let's say that uh, we have age in x1 right so let's say that age is an important factor to say whether a person will be diabetic or not so let's say that a person with uh, higher age has a higher chance of having diabetes right so in that case age would have a you know higher weight so similarly next let's say that we have some other input feature let's say that has like a lesser weightage compared to the age so this is what like basically weight means so it kind of signifies how important that input feature is so we have x1 and the corresponding weight is w1 and then we have x2 and the corresponding weight for this input feature is w2 similarly for x3 we have a weightage as w3 and then we have a bias so this b is called my bias so this is just like a offset value and this is like a kind of a error that we uh, you know intentionally add to this so this is like again an offset value if you think about in terms of a linear regression model it's like the intercept that we have it's kind of like shift uh, you know our model by a particular factor so that is what like bias is all about and then we have a weighted sum so in this weighted sum it's nothing but we take this x1 multiply with this w1 and then we take this x2 and multiply with w2 similarly x3 is multiplied with this w3 so all this product of input feature and the corresponding weight is added so that's what this summation is called it's okay if you don't understand this completely i'll explain you this in more detail in the next slide but this is what the weighted sum is it's the sum of the product of input features and the weight and once you have this sum that is fed to a activation function so something happens in the activation functions and this activation function after performing a certain function it outputs a certain value right so this is the output so to give a recap so we have input features that is like multiplied with this weight or uh, you know applied with this weight and a summation happens this summed value is then applied to an activation function and you finally got a output so these are all the factors that we have so we have inputs weights bias weighted sum activation function and output so once we you know have the product of this weights and input features we just like add this bias value and bias will always be a single value you can remember that so as i said like weights will be equal to the number of input features that you have if you have like 10 input features you would have like 10 weights but you will always have one bias value now let's try to uh, you know read this definition again now it would make like more sense a perceptron is a basic artificial neuron that takes inputs which are this x1 x2 and x3 applies weights which are my w1 w2 and w3 combines them and produces an output so combines them as what happens in this summation and produces an output using an activation function represented by this and then it is used for tasks like binary classification and we know it is a building block of neural network so this uh, let's try to understand the last sentence that it can be used for binary classification now a perceptron can be used as a standalone machine learning model <clears throat> right so we have weights bias and so on so we would like add some optimization optimization algorithm like gradient descent and this can be a standalone machine learning model when you do that it can be used only for a binary classification problem and when you combine several perceptron and then you get like a neural network so that is like the concept so what i want you to understand here is when we combine like several uh, perceptrons as our input layers hidden layers and output layer you have a neural network but a perceptron can be used like standalone as well as a ml model but it would be like less complex it would it may not give you like accurate predictions as a neural network would give right so that is the catch there now let's try to understand the mathematical representation of a perceptron uh, so we have discussed about the inputs weights summation activation functions output and so on let's try to understand this with some mathematical terms so this is my input vector let's say that we have x1 x2 x3 until like xn so this would be a vector right so which contains all the uh, inputs and this will be multiplied with my weight vector so weight vector let's call this input vector as w and the weight vector as uh, sorry input vector as x and weight vector as w and this would have like again the same number of input same uh, number of weights as the input features so we have w1 w2 all the way up to w n and then as i said you would have a single bias value <coughs> so this value can be like 5 or 10 or 0 0.5 or anything right and then as i said the summation function happens right so in this summation let's call this summation as z or z okay so z is equal to w1 into x1 because w1 is the weightage of this input feature x and then we have w2 into x2 similarly we have wn plus xn and finally we add this b so this is what we call this as sigma this summation right so you have this summation called as z <coughs> and then 
we have to apply this activation function so you can just like represent this uh, like in this particular symbol so this is my activation function so some function is applied to my z value so z is nothing but the summation that i have determined so it's basically the product of your weight and corresponding input features and finally adding your bias right now let's try to understand like uh, the activation functions so the activation functions determines whether a input neuron is or not an input neuron just a neuron is like a turned on or not whether it is like fired or not so we call it as fired if it kind of uh, you know gives the output as one we call that it, it's not firing when the output is zero basically like that that's what it means so let's try to take like few examples of this activation function and let's try to understand how this summation value will be transformed after applying this activation function so there are like several activation functions but i'm going to take like few of them so first let's uh, try to understand about a sigmoid activation function which is similar to our logistic regression model because logistic regression also follows the sigmoid function so output is a continuous value so the output from a sigmoid neuron or the neuron which has a sigmoid activation function is a continuous value that lies between 0 and 1 okay so the z value can be anything so here we have the z value it can be like 100 200 it can be minus 100 or anything right but when you apply this sigmoid function you will get the value between 0 and 1 and the formula for this is 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus z this exp is nothing but e power so 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus z so you can take some values for a z and you can see so the value will always lie between 0 and 1 so this is what we call a sigmoid function right and then there is another uh, activation function called a step function so again each of these activation functions works differently and it can be like used for different purposes so if you have worked on a uh, neural network before if you have like built a neural network before in pytorch or tensorflow i mean you could remember that when we create a layer we say what kind of activation function should it use whether it should use a sigmoid activation function or it should use a rectified linear unit so we call this as relu which is a famous one and whether we have to soft whether we have to use like the softmax activation function so you would have like represented that or mentioned that right so these are all like few examples of this activation function and then we have the step function where the output is binary so the output can be either 0 or 1 in the case of sigmoid it, it will be between 0 or 1 but this is just like a discrete binary value it can be either 0 or either 1 so based on a threshold again you can set this threshold but the common threshold we set is the once you apply the activation function we take the value as one if z value is greater than zero right else the z value or like basically uh, if the z value is less than zero or in other words if it is like uh, if it is a negative number in that case the output will be zero right so here we have the z formula so when you use a step function we know that the output will be zero or one let's say the summation that we get here is 150 in that case the step function would give the output as one because it's greater than zero let's say the z value that we get here is uh, minus 250 in that case the value is less than zero the z value is less than zero and now the output that we would get would be zero so this is how the step function works and then we have a sign function so this is also a binary output but it will give the value as either minus one or one so this is also similar to the step function when the z value is greater than zero it would give you the you know uh, output as one if it is less than zero if it is a negative number it will give the value as minus one so you just you can have like only two values as output from this particular neuron right so let's say that we have a neuron this is the output coming from it so this is the activation part and if you use a sigmoid activation function the output will be, be between 0 and 1 uh, kind of like a probability value if you use a step function the value will be either 0 or 1 and when you use a sign function the output will be either plus 1 or minus 1 depending upon the value of z <coughs> and then you have a uh, relu which is called as rectified linear units which is like one of the most famous uh, activation functions which we use and this is like more efficient and here the output is the input value if it is positive else zero so this is like the representation of this so max of zero comma z now what happens is if your summation value if your z value is a positive number then the output of this neuron is that same number 
if the summation value of the z value is negative then you have the output as zero so this is the idea right so this basically kinds of caps negative value so your output so you can use this whenever you don't want a negative value as the output of your neuron so let's try to understand this in this particular neuron let's say that we are using uh, rectify linear units and let's say the z value is thousand in that case the output value will also be thousand so if it is a positive number you are going to get the same positive number as the output let's say the summation that we get is minus 10 in that case the output will be zero let's say the summation is like minus 2000 in that case also you will get the output as zero so basically you have a cap at zero but it can have like any positive numbers right so that's what is represented here as output is the input value input value in this case is nothing but the z right because the input value of uh, activation function is z so output is the input value if it is a positive number else we have zero so basically for negative uh, summation values we would get zero as the output and in other case if it's a positive number we would get like the same positive number so again there are like several other activation functions like leaky relu and so on and i'll like make a separate video for this activation function alone but we mostly kind of use like this sigmoid function with this uh, you know perceptron or we can also use like different uh, like functions like step functions and so on so i hope everyone is clear until this part and the next video will also be about perceptron where we will take an example and try to calculate uh, this activation function value the summation value by ourselves and try to understand this with an example and let's also try to understand how the weights are adjusted how the optimization occurs and let's also discuss about the limitations of perceptron once that is done in the later video let's also try to build this perceptron from scratch in python so that will be a good exercise so i hope everyone is clear until this part and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching